Hello, and thank you for joining us on this podcast. You will be listening in on a conversation between Brandon Poe and Alan Sloan about a creative way that the Sloan Group has developed for accountants to work together. Brandon Poe is the founder of Poe Group Advisors, a leading edge intermediary focusing exclusively on accounting practice sales, mergers, and acquisitions. Brandon is the author of Accountant's Flight Plan, Best Practices for Today's Firms, and On Your Own, How to Start Your Own CPA Firm. Alan Sloan is the managing partner of the Sloan Group, which is a successful accountancy and business consulting firm in Toronto, Canada. Alan is a Toronto native who started his practice in the basement of his family home with only a handful of clients. Alan believes Sloan Group is in a unique position to help its clients achieve their goals. Because we are entrepreneurs who run our own business, we can assist clients from the business point of view instead of just the accounting point of view. To learn more about Poe Group Advisors, please visit www.pogroupadvisors.com. To learn more about the Sloan Group, please visit www.sloangroup.ca. All right. I'm here today talking with Alan Sloan of Sloan Partners. And Alan and I came to know each other because he has purchased two firms from us now. Um, Just closed on a deal last Friday. And uh, Alan, welcome. Thank you very much, Brandon. Pleasure working Um, with you. It has been a pleasure. And uh, I know you're a busy guy with a new acquisition to uh, bring into your firm. Um, How about just tell our listeners just a little bit about yourself and about your firm? Okay, it uh, started at a small 30,000 watt radio station in Cincinnati, and no, I, I, truthfully, my, I, I've I've always had an entrepreneurial side to me, probably a little different than perhaps a lot of accountants that maybe some of us are used to seeing. Um, this particular practice started about 30 years ago, actually, in my basement, and as we sit today, we're now uh, four equity partners with uh, three associate partners, a staff of 25. We have close to 30,000 square feet here in Toronto. Uh, We're growing and things are good. So we're full service. We do good work. We value our clients. We look after them and we're looking for more business. Well, and I can vouch for the entrepreneurial spirit. I mean, we work with all sorts of buyers and you are definitely – innovative and you think like a business person um, which kind of brings into what the main topic that I wanted to talk about today was uh, this associate program that you've created and when you told me about this I immediately recognized that this is a really creative way to foster startup accountants Absolutely. and as you mentioned as you mentioned you've got 30,000 square feet um, so I'd imagine that um, you know this associate program that you've created really is appealing to those with an entrepreneurial streak such as yourself. Uh, could you tell us, in, you know, in a nutshell, how does this program work? Well, if I if I may, I'd like to back up a little bit. So what what originally happened was we had a much smaller footprint than in a traditional office uh, in a different part of the city. And a client of mine uh, bought this wonderful building, and this space was available, beautifully laid out with with uh, hardwood floors and, and you know beautifully done. We were quite excited, but it was a lot more space than we needed. And so, I guess that was kind of the embryo of the process. And originally, we started looking for essentially for tenants. And so, the tenants we were looking for would be accountants or professionals where there might be some synergy, some opportunity to to do business together, uh, lawyers, uh, trustees in bankruptcy, uh, uh, valuation people, that sort of thing. And they would pay rent, but their deal could be a little bit different, maybe a little bit more close to us where they would take advantage of our professional development, maybe some of our software, some of our other services. And and that was kind of the embryo, I, I, I guess, of of this this project, which is now this associate partner kind of idea. And so as we were moving this along, the, we we came across a couple of uh, individuals that felt that they wanted a more intimate relationship where they could actually take advantage of the brand because they were finding that they were growing and they were getting clients that were feel, that they felt exposed possibly that were outgrowing them. 
And so a guy working, you know, as, as a sole practitioner may be having that exposure, but being part of a larger organization, he can market himself as something bigger and better. And so that was kind of the initiative, and it's and it seems to be taking off. We're we're getting a lot of interest. So so the idea, what you intended to start, wasn't what ended up. It sort of morphed as you went along. That's pretty pretty interesting. Um, well, we were looking to start to fill the space. I mean, that's kind of right. What, right. I, right. Out of necessity, I just had more space than I needed. So yes, <laughs> that's true. It did kind of morph. And I, I guess I, I was looking around at different models, and I looked at, for example, uh, the real estate industry. So in that world, you've got a broker who's who's c- kind of got the brand and the house, and and he brings in these agents that work essentially independently and pay some kind of overhead allocation to the broker and fills right. the building up with all of these people and they share ideas, they share marketing, whatever else they might take advantage of from each other, but for all intents and purposes, they're each each guy is on his own. And so that was a model that attracted me and that's kind of the, where, you know, I guess where, where this started. Yeah, and I know I used to have a home office and I just like three weeks ago uh, moved in. No, three months ago rather. We moved into an a office outside of the home, and I have a remote team. And I must say, it's really nice to work with other professionals. Just being in a building with other professionals, where you can pop into the next office and ask a question or talk about your weekend or whatever. Um, so. Uh, well, for sure, that, about- that's true, Brandon, if I may as well. You know, we try and foster that. In fact, you know, we, we're building a bit, I guess it's kind of a community here. And so, you know, we have a Halloween party, we have a Christmas party, we have an after-tax season party, we have a golf day, and we invite everybody to these things. So that you're seeing a lot of camaraderie and people get to know each other and maybe even start to understand the specialties that each of the other people in the office might have so that they can go down and knock on a door and say, you know, I have this, this problem with a real estate transaction. What do you think about that or what do you think about this? And we yeah. take advantage of it. So it's, it's, um, it's a situation where you get to work in a firm, but you eat what you kill. I mean, it's sort of, the best of the, sort of the best of both worlds um, in many ways for, for someone who wants that sort of arrangement. Precisely. Um, I mean, the only thing that we're careful about, because they will be working under our brand, is that they're professional, that they're honest, that they're not there to do bad things because we don't want to be associated with anything that's, that's inappropriate. We have a quality control program here, so if they're doing assurance work, for example, it's got to go through a second partner review. So we're careful that the quality of the work that's going under our letterhead is, is as if our firm did it itself. So that's, there are some rules and regulations about being here, but, it, but other than that, you're, you're on your own. You, 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 like you say, you eat what you kill. Right. Now, is the program, would you say it's fully developed, or are you still tinkering with the formulas? I would imagine it'd be, you'd have to have some sort of um, inter, you know, billing arrangement or something, um, and I don't mean for you to disclose that here, but is it still somewhat of a work in process, or you have a pretty clear program in Well, place. we have a pretty clear program, but, you know, we're flexible. Different people have different needs, and we understand that. So it can be some kind of a ladder-type approach. But essentially, the, the, the simple version of it is that we take a percentage of the billing right off the top. So right. that, that's kind of it. And obviously, one advantage is that they're not paying – as if they were a tenant, until they actually collect the money from the client. So we're banking them. We're paying right. for the insurance. We're looking after all of the administration. We're looking after the billing. I mean, they have to prepare the invoice, but we we send it out. We send out the statements to their clients and, and do all of the, the back office kind of stuff, and they pay us a percentage. So we can manipulate that a little bit depending on you know the negotiation but that we know where our sort of our bottom is and we don't go below that right um how would you describe your ideal candidate you know it's interesting because they're they're coming from all kinds of different 
ways. So, you know, we've we've got one individual here that came uh, who was, uh, in, the, in the large firms, as you know, there's a forced retirement. And so this particular guy was 62 years old and was asked to leave one of the big four firms. And he wasn't ready to sit on his front porch and wait for the mailman. So he wanted to continue to work. And he negotiated with his former firm to take with him a small book, um, you know, there were clients that they felt, I guess the former firm felt, they weren't going to keep anyhow. And this guy negotiated to take, it was about $100,000 of business, I think, if I remember. And he brought that with. There were some restrictive covenants about other clients that he couldn't touch and so on. But he's very comfortable here building his consulting practice and, and, and his accounting practice. And he's happy to come to work every day in this kind of environment. So that's that's one guy, and the other maybe end of the spectrum would be, as you were describing, someone coming out of his basement who's ready to to, to take on a little more of a, a front image and, and be a little more, I guess, out there in marketing and be part of something instead of being in a basement, get some camaraderie going. And so th- th- they come from all kinds of different directions. Well, one thing, you, you know, you're talking about synergy, and one thing I see a lot with uh, solo practitioners is they're trying to do too many things for too many people, and their practices become very unfocused. So they're trying to do uh, accounting on one end, they're trying to do some assurance work, and they're doing tax work, and someone asks them to um, do some special projects, and they just end up scattered and doing everything, I would imagine, and tell me if this is not correct, but this would lend itself to some specialization. For example, if if you had a a guy that just focused on specialized tax in your office, then people could refer work, work to him or her when they have specialized tax needs or audit needs or are you seeing some of that some of the absolutely in fact that's part of the pull for us and typically our arrangement is that we'll allow the we'll bill for the services of our tax guy 50 percent of his bill out rate so if, for example we're billing him out at 400 dollars an hour we would bill the associate two hundred dollars an hour and so that would give him an opportunity to do a markup on it and we're getting a recovery as well so we're very very happy with that but where we are finding a lot of opportunity for us and it also helps the 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 associate that's joining us is on the assurance side because as the rules are changing it's Mm -hmm. it's hard to stay current and if you've got one audit in your practice there's no way you can meet the, yeah. the, the, the institute. Here it's the Institute of Chartered Accountants, I guess. I'm not sure what it's called in the States. But, you know, you can't meet that, those requirements and, and stay current. So, yeah. you know, our, we're able to say, you know what, let us do that part of the file for you. Make sure that it meets the quality control uh, that, that's necessary. Slide it back under your desk and you deliver it to your client. And it's a good product. You can stand behind it. So that's where yeah. we're finding a lot of of, of cross work going on and a, and a big advantage to be to be here. Yeah, it's such a it's really a simple concept, and we tell people this all the time as they're thinking about growing their practices or they're thinking about getting their practices ready for sale. The more focused it is, it's it it's amazing how much the 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 focusing impacts the profitability of a firm. So. I could definitely see the synergy, and um, I bet it's I bet it brings a lot of energy and enthusiasm into the building too. Are you are you absolutely? Fine? I think people are having fun here. We've got a fun place to come to work. Yeah, um, I, we haven't gone so far as like at the, some of the offices where you know the more the high tech guys where you've got pool tables and foosball and that sort of stuff. Maybe that's that's next. We've got, <laughs> we've got a TV in the and the cafeteria so we've got sports on if that's going on, but we don't have the open bar that sort of thing. <laughs> that's a good idea. Thank you. Yeah, there you go. The Google of accounting firms. So. Right. Um, now how does how does how do the people feel like it's impacting their clients? Uh, the associate partners are there do they feel like their clients are being better served through all of this? 
Uh, I don't know that I can answer that question. I, I can't see why they wouldn't. I mean, our offices are very, very pleasant to come to. Uh, they, they're very professional, and I think that anybody that comes here would certainly feel that this is, you know, a nice, good, proper place to, 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 to be doing this kind of business. I don't know. I guess I think so. I can't see why they wouldn't. There's certainly nothing negative about it. Yeah. Uh, it's tough for me to answer that, though, Brennan. Well, they probably feel it when if they – feel like they're outgrowing the accountant, they don't really have that feeling necessarily with your arrangement if, if a broader services. For sure, for sure like that. that. And I, but I can tell you one thing that just comes to mind now, and, and, and we've got a couple of, of individuals here that are kind of getting to that stage where, you know, as they get older um, and they're starting to think maybe about retiring, we're ready, willing, and able to arrange to buy them. And so their clients are comfortable coming to these offices, have been coming to these offices for a number of years. And so as they decide they want to start slowing down, it's only natural that we would be able to be able to accommodate that. So, so that's another advantage. And the clients, it's almost like an invisible transition for them because they're already used to doing business with our firm, just a different right. partner. Right. So that's well, got to be comforting. It's... Um it's an interesting way to expand both your firm and help others expand theirs. I think it's a great, it's a really creative idea, and I have not seen this before, um, or I have not had contact with someone who was doing it. So, you know, really another angle, sharing. maybe you know, you took a, take an individual perhaps that's got a, maybe some health issues, and so. That, you know, they want to be safe. They're not ready to 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 stop, but they know that th- that a day is coming. They're they're mortal, and so that's another reason that it might be of some advantage to them to be associated with with a group of guys that can back them up if he's God forbid something happens. So there's right. lots of reasons why it's 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 a good thing. All right, my um, next question is uh, a little different. So. Just in terms of your impression of the accounting pre- accounting profession as a whole, like from a forty thousand foot view, what what do you think is changing, and what opportunities do you feel are especially exciting right now in the profession as a whole? Okay, <laughs> um, you know clearly there's a there's a a trend for uh, firms to be merging, firms to be being bought out. There are in Canada. Um, we're watching a couple of large firms that are swallowing small firms every day, and I mm-hmm. think that the demographics certainly speak to that. You've got a a whole group of you know aging baby boomers that have made their living in the accounting world and are now 60, 65 years old and have to make some decisions about their transition and so for me it's opportunity because we're we're in acquisition mode we we want that so that's certainly that's something very real that i see in the accounting profession i think that you know from a standards point of view you know i've seen the shift you know with the enron uh mess i think that the accounting profession perhaps overreacted and and set up all kinds of standards that that were very difficult and expensive for clients to to maintain and i think that there's a i see a little bit of an easing off on that that the pendulum is maybe swinging back a little bit um i don't know it's like i mean it's a good profession yeah. it's you know we're i guess the other thing that's interesting is um, the the individuals that are coming into this profession are are much more global. You've got you know students that are coming from countries all over the world that are that are taking up accounting as a profession, and so the 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 the, the individuals that we're hiring here are are a lot different than they were even as recent as 10, 15 years ago. We're getting all, many are English as a second language, so that's a little bit of a challenge, but it's also kind of exciting because you're getting all these different people with different backgrounds that bring different and smart ideas. And so it's, 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 uh, it's, a, it's interesting times for sure. Yeah, I, I think on the one hand, it's kind of nice to hear that the complexity is easing. Um, one thing, too, I think technology is getting better and better, 
and clients are able to expect a little more from their accountant in terms of value add. I think if um, if, if accountants really want to succeed going forward, I think they're going to have to be more and more focused on how do we add value to the client beyond just the uh, compliance work that people are used to receiving. You know, it's not going to be, hey, here's your financials or here's your tax return. They're going to want some insight with that. And um, I think I don't. I don't know that that's any different than it than has always been. I think that that differentiates the good firms from the yeah. mediocre firms, and I think we've been always challenged by that. But I think that you know there is still an element of our business that is seen as a commodity, and so if you're able to do it efficiently and use the technology to to make you know make it so that you can be competitive, I think that 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 there's a big advantage to doing it that way for sure. Right. Well, Alan, it's been a real pleasure, and I appreciate you sharing this with our audience, and uh, hope we can line up some more deals for you. That would be great, Brandon. Thank you. It's been a pleasure <laughs> working with you. You are very professional, and everything that you've, you've done, you've done it well, and, and it's been organized, and, we, and, and the support that you give through the process has been great, and so I'm happy to work with you anytime. Ah, happy to hear that. All right. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you for listening in on this podcast. If you would like to contact Alan and his team, please call 416-665-7735. To learn more, please visit sloangroup.ca. If you would like to contact Poe Group Advisors about buying or selling a practice, you can email them at info at pogroupadvisors.com or by phone at 888-246-0974. Brandon's website and blog are located at www.pogroupadvisors.com.